Welcome to another video. Today I thought I would declutter a little differently. This is kind of how I wanted to initially do this anyway. So I figured why not we'll try it this way. So after you watch the video let me know what you prefer. If you prefer the products like this just kind of laid out so that we can look at them and talk about them or would you prefer for me to sit and talk to you and you know kind of have a face-to-face -face kind of video about the products. So I don't think that this collection here is that crazy. This is all of my foundations, my powders, and concealers. As you can see, I don't have a lot of concealers, so this is kind of an easy video to film. I also feel like I'm missing a Shape Tape concealer, and I don't know where that one is. I think that's it. I keep finding like little bits and pieces here and there. So I think what I'm going to do first is just kind of zoom in on a section and go through all the products. All right, let's talk about powders. I do have several powders here. Obviously, I think I have a little bit of a problem because I always want to try the new powders and then a lot of them wind up just kind of sitting and I don't really do anything with them. So I am going to try to cool down my powders. As with most declutters, if they're old, I'm going to toss them. If they are new enough that I can donate, I will and so on and so forth. So Obviously, I'm not going to donate like disgusting products. If they look super used and I don't think it's hygienic, I'm just going to toss them. I had to insert this little clip to show you guys. I totally left out these foundations right here. So I have two shades of the Marc Jacobs Shameless. I'm going to hold on to these. I did really like this foundation, so I totally forgot. Oops. forgot those are in a different spot. And then I have the... Sephora Tint Infusion. This one's old. I'm going to toss. And also have the Buxom Show Some Skin Weightless Foundation. I think this is pretty old. Um, it actually was pretty cute. But as you can see, it's not been used a lot and it's definitely on the older side so i'm gonna part ways with both of those and we get a little focus so first i have the makeup forever this is the ultra hd setting powder so this is a pressed i don't use a lot of pressed powders but i feel like i should keep a couple these are really convenient especially if you're traveling and you want to stick with non-messy powders but i'm gonna be honest they're not my go-to i feel like this is one that i would keep because it is hd so i can take pictures wearing it so yeah, it does have a lot of good benefits to it. So I think I'm going to keep this one. It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Pressed Powder. This is kind of like a sample size. I've never used this one. So I think I'm going to donate this guy right here. I did just wash my hands before I came in here. So just so you guys know. Next I have the Laura Geller. This one is Balance and Brighten in the shade Fair. This one I have used but it has never been a favorite. That's what it looks like. So it's one of their baked foundations and overall I just I never thought that they were that stellar but this one is a little bit on the older side and I don't reach for it so I am going to toss this one. A couple more that are in a pressed form. This is the Sephora Micro Smooth Powder. This one's really amazing. It's pretty affordable as well and I do love this one. It kind of just smooths the complexion, gives you a bit of an airbrush finish, and I love it. So I'm going to keep that one. Next I have something from Marc Jacobs. This one is a discontinued product. This is the Perfection Powder 120 Ivory. So this one technically is like a powder foundation, but it's got kind of like a sheerer coverage to it. So it's got a little bit, but it's not incredibly full coverage or anything. So I do like this to set a foundation, especially when I feel like it still needs a little extra coverage, if that makes sense. So I think I'm going to hold on to this for now. Clinique Stay Matte Sheer Press Foundation in One Stay Buff. I have used this. This one is also pretty old. I haven't worked for Clinique in a while and I do believe that I got this when I was working for them. So that one's pretty darn old. I am going to part ways with it. One that I do reach for occasionally is the Lancome. This is the dual finish and the color of this back in the day is what made me love it. It's the Porcelain Delicat. It really had a cool finish to it. So this one I have purchased multiple times. This is probably... I want to say at least a year old so it's not new by any means but I do reach for it some so I'm going to continue to enjoy it for a little while longer. Milani Prep Set and Go. This one I think that I liked. I can't honestly remember this one that well. It's a little chalky. You know what? I'm keeping the Makeup Forever one so I think I'm going to let this one go. Next from Estee Lauder. 
This is the Set, Blur, and Finish Perfecting Press Powder. So this one's also like a translucent pressed powder. This one's nice. It's very fine. It's also translucent without being like white, which I really enjoy. So I'm going to hold on to this and use it a bit more. As you can see, I haven't really used it much. It almost looks brand new. So I'm going to give that one some more time. I have from Bare Minerals. I think this one is like the dual finish one. So yeah, it's a matte and a glow, which looks like this. These are actually really pretty and the powder is really finely milled. I especially like the glow one. I don't have anything quite like it and it's not like glittery. It's not like a highlight. It just has like a little subtle glow. So I would like to also use this one a bit more before I part with it. So, so far we have donated one trash three and I have kept six. So that is about it for the pressed powders. So I have a couple cushion products. I'm gonna keep both of these because I only have two. I have the L'Oreal Lumi Cushion. I really enjoyed that one, but I've only used it once or twice. And then I have a Misha Cushion Compact, which I actually just recently changed out. Um, so this one is number 21 from them and it's a replacement cushion in here. So these are really nice because you can literally just pop them out and reuse them. So my cute little bear compact can always stay. And I actually bought some little replacement cushion things when I went to New York from the cutest little shop. All right, so those are my, oops. So my two cushions are staying. He's so cute. Let's talk about some loose powders. So first, I'm just going to tell you what I carried with me when I went to New York. It was a long weekend and I used the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. I love this little bitty guy for travel. So convenient because the bigger powders are pretty large. And then I also use the Absolute powder from Lancome. This is Absolute. I never know how to pronounce that. But anyway, it's like a very light, fairer color. This one has a beautiful glow to it. So these are a great combination if you like both finishes. And I always keep these. Oops. So I'm keeping those two for my travel bag. All right, next, RCMA powder. Amazing. I feel like for a like white looking translucent powder, this one is probably the best one that I found. A lot of them either leave you looking kind of ghostly or give you flashback. There's a lot of reasons that I don't typically like them, but this one is amazing. So there's no color to it. There's no perfume. It's just a really good setting powder. Uh, not a bad price either, and it lasts you forever. The only thing I might change is the packaging. It's kind of like a seasoning shaker, so I usually use a little dish to kind of douse some powder in and then go from there which works just fine kind of the same thing for like cheap cheap is the revolution luxury baking powder i do have the shade ghost i will say this this powder is amazing because it goes on super white like it looks honestly scary when you put it on but it doesn't have flashback the only thing is i don't really like the look of it it winds up looking just a little bit chalky um i will say though that this is nearly full so i am going to donate it because honestly it's a great quality but i don't like the way that it looks on my skin let's talk about this guy the velvetizer i hate saying this because i do like a lot of what urban decay does like honestly a ton of it but this one to me was always the weirdest thing it has the most fine consistency to it like it literally feels like satin between your fingertips but every time I tried to set anything with this it honestly just looked as though everything got darker it was not a good look I don't know how to describe it perfectly but it kind of looked like it oxidized it just it didn't do anything for me this one you can also mix into foundations to give them a little bit more substance make them a bit more matte but honestly I tried and tried and tried it just didn't work for me so yeah if you love this awesome it just my skin was not having it and anything that I tried to like mix it with just didn't work for me that being said I could have used products that didn't agree with it that happens a lot of time so I am going to let this one go it's hardly used so I might donate this one I'm gonna look back and see when I actually got this because I don't remember how long I've had it so it will either be donated or sadly trashed. A great alternative to that, the ColourPop No Filter Setting Powder. I actually feel like this one has a really fine consistency as well. It's very smooth feeling, so it makes the foundation look really like airbrushed and smooth. It is a tiny bit dry for me, but I already have dry skin, and that is probably the reason why, but it's so very affordable, and I love to keep this around for, you know, inexpensive makeup looks, or I just like the powder, so I'm going to keep that one. I have the Kat Von D Petal Brightening Powder for under eye this was a lot of people's favorite and when this one went away I think a lot of people were kind of 
confused. Can we get a little focus? Like this is not want to focus today. I personally as of late have not been purchasing Kat Von D. I'm a little like disenchanted with their products. The things that I do have I do enjoy but I'm gonna hold on to it for now. It is a discontinued product so it probably will not make the next round of declutter but for now I'm gonna keep it because I don't have a lot of specific under eye powders. Not a lot of explanation needed here. I have the Laura Mercier Original Translucent Setting Powder and then I have the Glow setting powder and translucent. They're both amazing. I love to mix them. I love to do the regular on my T-zone and the glow everywhere else. Honestly, they're just really, really amazing powders. So yeah, I think everybody would agree. Most people, I should say. So I actually ran out of my Laura Mercier under eye setting powder, but I do have the Becca one. So this is the under eye brightening setting powder. To me, this one and the Laura Mercier are incredibly similar. With that being said, I probably prefer the Laura Mercier just like one little, little tiny bit more but they're so so similar and I actually really do love this powder so that tells you how much I love the Laura Mercier one but that one I did run out of so I'm just using this guy and really this and that Kat Von D one are the only under eye powders that I have. I have the Ciate Extraordinary Translucent Powder. I have not used this one a lot. Um, I maybe have tried it once so I'm still kind of on the fence about it. I don't even truly remember my first impression that much which tells me it wasn't really memorable either way. Usually I remember I remember if it's really good and I remember if it's really bad. This one's probably middle of the road, but I would like to use it more before I make a decision. This one's a very recent one I got in a subscription box. Okay, a couple powders that I think are pretty darn similar, but deserve a little bit of hype for each. So we have the Pretty Vulgar Powder Room Setting Powder. I absolutely love this one. It is translucent, but not white. It is very smooth. It sets everything well. I can use it comfortably on the under eye, and I honestly feel the exact same about my Tarte Shape Tape Setting Powder. So with this one, you do have the little net in here, which is, to me, kind of handy and kind of annoying. It's hard to get powder onto a sponge, but if you use a brush it works just fine so I don't know I kind of prefer the pretty vulgar just a little bit for packaging but they both to me are very similar very good powders this one I put a really big dent in this is the Kat Von D setting powder you can tell I have really loved this one so this is the setting powder and translucent again I think this is right along the category of the pretty vulgar and the Tarte very good my socks are not completely blown off by this but it is a really good staple powder I feel like I'm keeping too many loose powders and I need to go through and let some of them go. As much as I've used this one, I have found others since then that I do like a little bit more. So this will probably be on the chopping block. Man, I am not doing a good job. I've only gotten rid of two loose powders. That's not good. Alrighty, my camera did overheat and I also spent like 25 minutes. So I'm gonna try to go a little bit quicker and hopefully you guys will be all right with that. It was just going a little slow. So I only have three powders left that are open powders so anything you see over back here are unopened and brand new. I have the Jeffree Star. This is currently my favorite powder. This one is the Magic Star setting powder. I love this one. It is amazing under the eyes. It's not dry. It's smoothing. It helps your concealer not crease. Overall has been my favorite as of late. I also have the Hourglass. This is the Vanish setting powder. I have not used this one much. I think I've used it once and I really, really loved it. I do love a glowy powder. Come here. Come on. Come on. Keep it rolling. Thank you, baby. Mm-hmm. She had, yeah. She had to come in here, guys. She's probably gonna make it. Yep, make an appearance. All right, finally I have the Fenty Beauty powder. Gosh, I bought this with like such anticipation of using it and it's pretty much brand new. I have a problem. I actually said a while back like I was done buying powders because as you can tell I have way, way too many. So yeah, I do have the Fenty one. I definitely need to use this. If I've used it once, I don't even remember. So that's gonna be my last thing to handle. So we're going to move her over just a little bit. Sniffles is okay, baby. You just get comfortable. Okay. So I had a few things that were laying out on my vanity. So I'm going to talk about those first. So we have a couple favorites of mine. These are definitely two concealers that I really love. The Magic Star Concealer has been my number one ever since I got it. It honestly just 
it beat out everything else. I don't know what else to say. It's been amazing. Love this one. Very minimal creasing. Looks great under the eye. You can use it elsewhere. Good coverage. I don't know. It just goes for miles. It's really good. Also have the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. The only thing about this one is I do have a shade that is too yellow. I feel like overall Too Faced colors, at least in the past, have been far too yellow. They do have a shade now that I need to get, and unfortunately, I have two of these. <laughs> Actually, I have two of the wrong color. So I can still use it, but it looks a little bit better if I have a tan, and right now I do not. Otherwise, a great concealer. I picked this one up at TJ Maxx just to try it. It's the Becca Aqua Luminous Perfecting Foundation. This one's sheer coverage. I thought this might be beautiful in the summertime when I don't want a thick full coverage foundation. We shall see. The Naked Skin One and Done. I have had this one a little while. I feel like this is probably one that should go. So I have had this one for a little while, but it's a great base, especially if you want like a good SPF, you want something quick and easy. You can throw this on by itself or you can actually layer foundation over it. If you have like a foundation that's a little too sheer, you can put this on first. So I'm gonna hang on to it for now. I have the Long Calm Skin Feels Good. This one is really amazing. It actually has better covers than I expected. And the other day, People were asking me what foundation I was wearing, but I actually only had on this and concealer. So yeah, really love this one. Too Faced Peach Perfect. I don't always go for matte foundations, but this one is a really nice one. It's matte, but not overly dry. Again, the shade Snow is a little bit on the yellow side. I just realized that I'm definitely missing a powder. Oh, I'm so stupid. That made me think of this. So I do have this Becca powder. This is the Pink Haze. So weird little trick I started doing was this one has like a really pink hue to it. So what I'll do is layer this over a foundation that's a bit too yellow and it does a slight balancing act. It is not a miracle like fix for it, but it will slightly correct. So yeah, this one's a really good one. I don't always go for matte foundations, but this is one that I do enjoy a lot. I also have the IT CC Cream. This is in the shade Light. Light is far too dark for me, so what I typically do is use about two parts fair to one part light, but I'm actually completely out of fair, so I think I am going to declutter this one, and I have had it for a while. It's just not the right color for me. So I'm gonna let this one go for now. CoverGirl True Blend. So I have the True Blend Matte Made. I love that one, as you will see. I have several shades of it but this one is just the original true blend i picked this up at the cover girl store in new york and i haven't tried it yet so be on the lookout for that i love the cover girl vitalist healthy elixir this one gives a really luminous finish it is a touch dark for me but with a little bit of a self tan it looks really good I also have been kind of using a little trick where I'm using one little pump of the Huda. I have the shade Vanilla, honestly. I don't particularly like this foundation on its own. I have to mix it with something and even then the smell is a bit much for me personally. But it is a great way to lighten up my foundation because this shade is too light for me. I also have used this as concealer and it actually works pretty good like that. So yeah, I don't want to let it go because it is for any foundations that I have are a bit dark. I can mix this and it's a great way to lighten it up but I would not repurchase my correct shade. I don't know why my battery on my camera is going dead really fast but we're gonna go ahead and start. So I have several foundations as you can see. I do have one other concealer. This is the Anastasia in the shade 0 0.5. I don't even know if they sell this anymore. It's a very like creamy concealer. Not always what I go for, but I do occasionally reach for this. I'm gonna keep it for now. I feel like at this point, I'm just like showing you guys products and I'm not even decluttering. <laughs> oh God. So I have three Born This Way foundations in the shade Snow. I do like this foundation, but it's not like a number one go-to for me. That one's brand new. Yeah. So I have two that are brand new and one that is open. So I'm gonna keep the one that's open and one of the new ones, but then I am going to donate a perfectly new Born This Way foundation. I have been hoarding these shades because I love this foundation so freaking much. This is a True Blend Matte Made from CoverGirl. And I'm seeing right away that L30 looks kind of yellow. I'm gonna donate that one. Honestly, I love this foundation so much. This is gonna seem a bit ridiculous, but I'm gonna keep all of these shades because I can either mix them or like this one, the L40. It is definitely darker, but it is a cool undertone, so I can use that when I'm self-tanned. I love this foundation that much, so yeah. I may be a little crazy. And I have a tiny it CC and fair so I may hold on to that light one and just use it and mix it with this until I run out and then I will let the light one go I didn't realize that I had this little baby 
Oh my God. I have a brand new It's CC in light. So I'm going to hold on to the brand new one. I wanna say I've had this one for a while. Gosh, I am really wishy-washy today. My absolute favorite foundation, the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear. 100% keeping, I love that one. Lancome Tonidol, I have 100 Ivory, and I also have, this is the 110 Ivory Cool. I'm gonna keep both of these, I do use them, and my perfect shade is actually like a mixture of these two. I have two of the Lancome Waterproof Concealer. So these are actually different colors. I have, this is the porcelain one, as you can see. I have a really love that one. I honestly use this to carve out my brows with. That's how I like to use it. So I'm just gonna hold on to this one here, the new one. This one is really beaten up and we're gonna toss this. Okay, another clip. I need like divine intervention to be quicker at this, but here he goes, nothing. We did the cover girl. Let me tell you that this Bare Minerals Fresh Face Foundation is actually really amazing. So this is the one where you match yourself with the app. This is the best color match I've ever had, and I feel like I'm a bit difficult to match. I am like down to here on it. Love this. It's a really great foundation, and the color is great. Highly recommend if you have a hard time getting matched, you use your phone and actually like take pictures of your skin, and yeah, turned out really well. I also forgot to turn on my lights. I have two Fenty foundations, two shades that I have mixed together ever since the launch, and I've actually repurchased. I love this foundation. If I want a matte look, this is what I go for, especially if I want like a more true matte. This one I am sadly going to let go of. The packaging is kind of gimmicky, but the formula itself was not very good, nor was the color. So all in all, just not a really good fit, so I'm gonna let that one go. I have this Dior Nude Concealer. A, I think there's a good chance this one's actually been discontinued, but I didn't really like this one either, so I am gonna let it go. This Sephora Collection one is new. I have not tried this one yet, and I do wanna do a full face of Sephora Collection, so I'm gonna hold on to that. Two foundations I really like are the Bobbi Brown Skin Foundation. This one's got more of sheer to medium coverage, Then the Studio Skin is probably medium buildable to full. I actually really like both of these. Really similar bottles too, but both good foundations. And I actually have two of those Sephora Collection ones. So I will try that before I decide what I want to do with that. A lot of these foundations I got in gratis. So if you're like, why do you have multiples of those? Sometimes they accidentally send too many. Matte Velvet Skin. These are the same shade. I do actually really like this one. Um, this one I haven't used that much. And this one should be pretty much brand new. So... I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this one. I might see if somebody else can wear it, but I do really enjoy this foundation. These little Alginus color correcting drops got in here. Um, I do actually like these. Ooh, these seem uh, too thick, like they've gotten old, so I'm just going to toss these. I know that's not foundation, but it was just in there. The Ordinary, this is the Coverage Foundation. I honestly, I don't know if it's just my skin, but I have never really loved any of the products that I've gotten from the Ordinary. I've tried only a hand full so I can't really speak to the entire line but both the foundations were kind of a miss for me this one was okay but I have had it for a while and it looks like it's kind of separating so I'm gonna let this go a couple stick foundations I really like the Anastasia one I've used it a good bit um, and I do think that this one's getting discontinued if I'm not mistaken because I know on trend mood I saw that they are coming out with a new one the Maybelline Superstay coverage I actually really like this one the sponge to me is pretty much worthless but I don't have a lot of stick foundation, so I think I will hold on to both of those. Uh, the Kat Von D. I believe that I probably have a new one of these somewhere. I don't know. I feel like I probably had another one of these at some point. This is Light 46 Cool. Dang, I want to say I actually had a lighter one. This one is like ultra, ultra coverage. I'm going to be honest, the only time I wear this is when I'm like really breaking out. Doesn't happen a lot, but on occasion I will reach for it. So I guess I'll hold on to it for now. Uh, the Tarte Amazonian Clay Stick Foundation. This one's pretty good. Um, I wouldn't say that it's like an all time favorite, but it's decent. Makeup Revolution Stick Foundation. Wow, I had a couple more than I thought. I don't remember this one. That one feels kind of powdery. So a lot of these, I'm gonna be honest, like I'm gonna have to use them again and then try them out and see what I think, but more stick foundations than I thought. I have the Makeup Revolution foundation and concealer. I think these are two different shades. 
yeah so i have c1 and c3 of the concealer i did do a full face of make a revolution you can definitely just search um go to my channel and search if you want to see that i did like these i don't think that they really lived up to the hype but i haven't used them a lot since i would like to kind of refresh my memory and see if you know if they should stay in my collection I've got Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. This is a really great affordable one. I have Rose Ivory and Shell Ivory. Rose is probably a little bit better color, but I will wear this one on occasion if I have just a touch of a tan. I wound up with two shades of ColourPop. I have Fair 30 and Light 55. I want to say that Fair 30 might be like too light actually. No, that looks pretty good. That one's not bad. So I am going to hold on to these for now. Um, I will maybe try to find which one is my better color, but I've used a good bit of both of them before I like shook them up. They both had a decent amount missing and I do feel like this is a good foundation. Um, I like to keep a color, couple colors on hand and yeah, between like that and the Wet n Wild, I like to have some affordable options. I'm not doing a very good job of getting rid of much. This is kind of a frickety fail. Maybelline Super Stay Full Coverage. I feel like maybe I should get rid of one of these. I really loved the liquid and I don't see myself reaching for the stick as much. So in an effort to be a little bit more cutthroat, I'm gonna get rid of this guy. The Revlon Candid Foundation. I actually have a really good color in this. 130 is a great match. It's not too yellow, it's ivory, but it's not, like a lot of ivories tend to be a little bit more golden. This one was a great color. And then I have the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea. This is fair beige. I actually just did that thing on Tarte's website where you could like make your own bag. And I picked a little bit darker shade. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake, but this one is a little bit older. Still smells good. It does have SPF in it though. So I feel like with this one, I should probably, you know, if I'm gonna use it, use it. And they did also change the dropper on these. So I think once I have the new one and just kind of confirm that it is a better shade for me, I might let this one go. I don't wanna part with it just yet. I wasn't a very big fan of the Joa Yours Truly Foundation. I can't remember like my exact thoughts. I did do a video using like affordable things at the drugstore. Okay, it's very liquidy. Wow, that's a pretty light shade. Let's see. Yeah. Matches pretty well on the inside of my arm. I don't know, I don't remember liking this one a lot, but I also don't want to get rid of it just yet. I may like go back to my video and see what my thoughts were. I'm just not doing a good job. And the CoverGirl Concealers. This is the Vitalist Healthy Concealer. This one looks way too dark, but not dark enough to contour with. Ooh, well, it's too orange. So I'm gonna get rid of this one right here. I also have two shades of NARS Radiant Creamy. Uh, this one is a little bit more brightening, but I actually mix the two, and this one's a good spot conceal, so I'm gonna keep it though. This Naked Skin Color Corrector looks like it's all the way down here, but it also looks pretty old. Oh, you know, the consistency is still really good. Okay, I guess I'm gonna use that a bit more before I decide to get rid of it because the consistency still seems the same. I have Fenty Concealer and the Tonsa Doll Ultra Wear. Another favorite concealer that I always forget about because I feel like after Shape Tape came out, this one kind of got pushed to the backside, but I feel like it's a really good one. Naked Skin. I have the Master Camo from Maybelline. I basically kept two green color correctors, uh, one high-end and one drugstore, so I don't want to part with one. I also have the Dior Skin Flash. This is a radiance booster. Not really great as a concealer, but I do like to mix it to give a bright appearance. Kat Von D Lock It in White. I use this more so when my concealer is either too dark or I want to kind of pop a neon eyeshadow onto the eyelids and I want like a really white base. La Mercier Flawless Fusion. Ugh. They just don't have a color for me. Like this is the color. It's very peachy. I don't know how it's gonna show up on camera for real, but it's very peach and honestly just didn't brighten me. The formula, however, is very nice. I'm doing horrible. Cover FX, Power Play, Makeup Forever Ultra HD. I think the Makeup Forever is probably too dark. I know that's probably really hard to tell. Um, this color is a little dark, but it is a good self-tan color. So, uh, I guess I'm gonna keep those. 
the Stila Foundation Stay All Day Foundation and Concealer. This was actually pretty nice. I actually like the component too. It's kind of medium coverage. It didn't blow me away. It does have a little concealer on top as well, which this concealer is great for a spot conceal. So if you're ever wanting like a two-in-one and you like medium coverage and you want like a little spot concealer, that's kind of a good fit. Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion. I honestly haven't really tried this much. I've been kind of afraid of the color, but I need to do some self-tanning. I think I'm going to self-tan soon, and then this one might be a little bit better fit. As you can see, it's pretty yellow, but I'm going to try it. I ordered some Loving Tan. I'm going to try that out and then maybe see if this goes well. I have Amazonian Clay Full Coverage. This is Porcelain Beige. That's so a pretty good color in this one. I actually feel like I should probably dump my Kat Von D and just keep my Tarte one because this one's almost full and this one's pretty old. I think I'm going to do that. Clinique even better. Uh, I have the shade Breeze. I honestly haven't used this foundation in forever. This one I got in gratis and I have not used yet. You can tell it's just barely got a little something on there. So I'm just going to give this one a try. I don't think that I'm going to hold on to it after I try it, but we'll see. And then finally, the Josie Marin Vibrancy Foundation. This one's got a really nice, like, radiant finish, but this shade, Dynamic, is so light. Um, so I actually think I'm going to keep this little sample guy is actually much newer. This is Euphoric. Oh, that one's pretty yellow. I think I'm going to get rid of the big guy. I've had it a while, and it's so freaking light. And then I'm just going to try out this little one. Let's talk about this bin that is basically new stuff. So we're talking about this right here. I also took these out of here. So I'm just going to be honest. Most of this I'm going to keep. I don't see myself getting rid of a lot. But this is also all new stuff. So some of it I need to try. A lot of this is gratis. I have a backup of the Lancome 110 Ivory Cool. This is my favorite. If I had to pick a shade, this would be it. And I really love this one. So this is a brand new backup. I also have another Naked Skin. I actually just finished my other one. I love that foundation so much. So these guys are staying. I got the Beauty Bakery Flower Setting Powder. I really want to try this and I think I'm going to like it. Their brand has such a beautiful aesthetic. And yeah, I'm just really excited to try them out. And I have the Too Faced Born This Way. This is the Ethereal Setting Powder. I do like this one. I've just never purchased it. So I got these both um, from Ulta on a really good sale. So I'm happy to have those. A couple extra powder puffs. I am super stocked up on Laura Mercier. So these are brand new, unopened, regular translucent setting powder and glow. This Clinique, I think I'm going to get rid of. But this one looks like it's not used either. Wow, I don't know where this one came from. I think I'm going to give this one to my mom because I know she likes this powder. I have the Milk Makeup Setting Powder I still need to try. I've got two shades of Absolute. These are amazing. This one, honestly, the Absolute Pearl is a little dark. So I'm going to yank this out for when I'm self-tanning. And this is the same shade Pesci. Peach. I don't know. Ah! Yes, I do have another Kat Von D. Light 44 Cool. So I'm just going to hold on to this brand new one and I'll give this one a try. And maybe this will be a better color. The Long Time No Shine from Lancome. I have yet to try this. This one's relatively new. And then I have the Becca Hydra Mist. This one to me was crazy. So I have used this a, a little bit. But I want to say when I first got it and I turned it on its side, it only filled up a little bit extra. So I found that kind of weird. It looked pretty empty even from the beginning. Okay, the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. I have light peach. I'm going to actually take this out of the packaging and put it here. I have another NARS in Chantilly. This is the one, if I had to choose a shade, I would choose Chantilly, but I do also have vanilla. So this is a backup. And then I have the Lancome Mackey Complet. This is 90 Ivory. This one's brand new. I got those in gratis. Apparently, I've kept even more of these. So... <laughs> Guys, I love this foundation. Okay, so this one looks super yellow. This one looks really pink. I'm gonna donate this one. Dior Forever Foundation. I got this one in gratis. This is NARS Sheer Glow. This is like a current one. I just need to try it. That was the backup of Born This Way. I got Born This Way Concealer in gratis. Gratis NARS Concealer. A uh, not concealer, I'm sorry, it's foundation. This is the one that has the spongy on the end. I don't know if I'm going to use the sponge, but I haven't really tried that. Fenty. Also got this in gratis. This is 120. I actually have 110 and 170, I believe. So I actually haven't tried this shade, but hopefully I can transition to this shade and stop mixing too. Vanish Stick. I also have the Vanish Fluid. 
or I don't know why I call it fluid, Vanish Seamless Liquid Foundation. I have this Smashbox one, but this one's cool because it has your foundation and then it has your contour. So I don't know, I was thinking about like maybe traveling with it, how that could be convenient. Like I said, those are a lot of new things. I'm sorry if this was aggravating because I didn't get rid of all that much. I honestly thought that I would get rid of more, but I can't say that I'm like really surprised. Really quickly, we have some trash. These are the things that I don't feel like are nice enough to donate. And then these are everything that I feel are nice enough to donate. I feel like I didn't do super great. So this is the majority of my collection. I don't think I have an insane amount, but I am going to be honest, a lot of this will be things that I'm going to pull out, I'm going to try, and then I'm going to make a decision on because obviously I don't need all of this. It's a little bit much and I will continue to kind of cull it down. I obviously have five shades of the CoverGirl foundation that I love, but this is everything when it comes to powders, foundations, and concealers. So I think overall it's not too insane of a collection but I am kind of on a freeze for buying. I did purchase the Juvia's Place foundation because I just had to know. Look out for a video including that but other than that this is everything and I am going to be on like a bit of a, a no buy or a low buy when it comes to foundations and powders and concealers. So that's everything. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if any of these are favorites of yours. If I had to narrow it down to 20 products I probably could but it's mine, so I'm not. <laughs> Let's do our dad joke. How do you make antifreeze steal her blanket? Bruh. I think that was just a bad joke. All right, I'm done. I love you guys. I'll see you next time.